Number 17. Determine the oxidation states of the elements in the compounds listed. None of the oxygen-containing compounds are peroxides or superoxides. Okay, so they gave us a little bit of information as, as far as what oxygen is doing in these questions. So that's good. They were nice. Thank you very much. And uh, so we just have to find out the oxidation states in uh, this compound, H3PO4. And, um, yeah, so, oh, so the first thing I want to say is that if you want a rundown on the full rundown on oxidation states, you could check out number 16A, okay? Uh, it's on the playlist. The playlist is at the end of this video. If you want to click it, if you're not on the playlist right now, just be on the watch out for that and you can go to 16A, but if not, that's okay. We can, we can just do it from here. So I'm just going to rewrite this H3... P O four. So when we have to find the oxidation states and just know that the oxidation states are charges, right? We've been seeing charges all throughout, uh, this, this course, right? The charges are always in the upper right hand corner, right? Of an element. And we use those charges or the oxidation states to crisscross to find the, um, to find the, the, the compound, right? So, right, you know, like H plus one, O minus two, we crisscross them and we got water. But now there is a, a problem here because usually we had two elements crisscrossing, right? To get our uh, compound. However, we need to find oxidation states for three elements here. So the trick to finding out the individual oxidation states of hydrogen, uh, phosphorus, and oxygen is that you're always going to know the oxidation states on the edges of the compound, okay? The more inward that you go from both sides, that's usually the one that you really need to figure out. So we probably know, I mean, we definitely know, the oxidation states for hydrogen and oxygen. And from that information, we can find out the oxidation state of the phosphorus. Now, just know that these three elements came together to form a charge, right? There's three elements here. There's hydrogen, there's phosphorus, and there's oxygen, right? And the addition of them together would always equal the total charge. Now, the total charge is always in the upper right-hand corner of the compound, okay? But if we just look at this one, right, did we see any charge up here? No, right? There was no charge. So what does that mean in terms of a number, right? It was neutral. So what number was it? It was a zero. So I know that when these elements came together, they formed a molecule, they formed a compound that had a total charge of zero. Okay, so we know that information. Now, when we're starting to do math, because what we're going to be doing is we're just going to set up a quick and easy mathematical formula um, and then just solve, basically. So there's two things that you need to know. You need to know the oxidation state. So I'll just put ox state for each element, okay? And then you need to know the number of how many you have. So let's first work with the oxidation states. Remember, the more closer in you go, the one in the middle, you're probably not gonna know, right? Now this isn't always the case, but there's so many different ways of doing these problems. I just like to stick with this one. So the hydrogen, I'm gonna follow my trends. The hydrogen is right over here. And that's in group one. So hydrogen should be a plus one state. Let's go over to oxygen, right? Oxygen is all the way over here. And according to the trend, it's a negative two. So I'm going to put that over here. And I just want to say that if none of the oxygen containing compounds are peroxides and superoxides, that means oxygen must have a negative two charge. Only when you have peroxides or superoxides, the oxygen charge or oxidation state will change. Do we know what phosphorus is? 
charges or oxidation state, well, you might be saying, well, hey, look, you know, phosphorus is over here. Uh, it should be a negative three, right? But if we, if we put the negative three in here, will that equal a total charge of zero? I have way too many negatives. So that means that it wasn't a negative three. It's a charge that is not going with the trend. So just know that. So I don't know the, tr the charge. I don't know the oxidation state. So I'm just going to put an X. Now I just need to gather up how many I have of each. How many hydrogen were here? Oh, there was three. How many phosphorus were here? There was one. Whoop. And how many oxygens? Well, there was four. And remember, the addition of these always equal zero. All you have to do now, we're getting closer, is you're just going to multiply these together. And the sum of them will equal zero. So let's see. Three times a plus one is three. Plus one times x, x, plus negative two times four is actually a negative eight. So plus a negative eight is really minus eight. And that all equals zero. So now all we got to do is just solve, right? Three minus eight is really a negative five. So I can just simplify this by saying X minus five equals zero. And if I just plus five on both sides, we kind of can see what that phosphorus oxidation state was. It was X. So X equals a plus five. And that's the oxidation state of the phosphorus. And as you can see, it is not the trend. So just be careful. So what I would do is I would just list them all out. So I would say, okay, we have hydrogen that followed the trend. That was a plus one. Phosphorus was a plus five and oxygen was a minus two oxidation state. And that's your answer. Just know what this actually means, right? If hydrogen was a plus one, that means each hydrogen, there was three of them, each hydrogen uh, lost one electron. So the plus actually means lost in chemistry, okay? Because electrons are negative. A phosphorus, each phosphorus lost five electrons, but then oxygen was a negative. So each oxygen, there was four of them, each oxygen gained two electrons. So that's basically what these oxidation states are saying. They're basically telling you who lost and who gained electrons when they formed this compound. Yeah? Okay, that's the answer. That's all I got for you guys. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Uh, give this uh, video a thumbs up if it helped you, and subscribe to the channel if you like. I uh, love helping you guys out. I hope you guys are having a great day and that you're studying hard. Good luck on those exams and quizzes, okay? I will see you guys in the next lesson. Bye-bye.